In this Godot tutorial, I'll teach you how you can create a create account mechanic so that your players, when downloading your game for the very first time, can create their own user accounts. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is a user interface to put all that new account data into. Right here, we got the login screen that we've made in a previous tutorial, and we'll use exactly the same building blocks to create ourselves a you know, rudimentary, easy um, create account process. So I've already made that, and I trust you can do the same using the building blocks in the tutorial from last time. When we have a look at it, I'll hide the login screen, and I'll show the create account screen. And as you can see, I'm not creating a new scene for the create account panel. I'm just creating a second option inside the same scene that we already have, and that will basically give this user interface panel two different states that it can be in. So this basically is an email address for a username and a password and a please repeat your password because typing your password wrong when you create a new account seems to be a thing these days. So we got that back button. That's of course gonna bring us back to that login screen. And on the login screen, we got that create account button that's gonna take us to that create account screen. That's what we have to code. That manual switching what I do here that needs to be done in code. So talking about code, let's go over to the code. On the bottom here, you can see the five different nodes that are gonna be important in the code, and I've put those all in a variable so they're easily accessible. We got the three user uh, inputs, that's the username, password, repeat password, and the two buttons. Also on the top, I have um, a note reference to both this login screen and the create account uh, screens here, or the, the VBox containers, what they actually are, so I can easily call those two. On those um, screens, the switching between the two, I've hooked up the signals of the buttons back and create account. And on create account press, we wanna hide the login screen and show the create account screen. And on back press, we do of course exactly the opposite. We hide the create account screen and we show the login screen. Now, the magic of course happens when we press on confirm because that's actually when we start requesting to make a new account. What we do is we first do a couple of checks with the usernames and passwords usernames, oh, one I, I would assume, and the passwords that were provided uh, to make sure that you know if, if the player typed something wrong, character or the password didn't meet the requirements or typed the wrong password, we can, we can filter that out right here. We don't have to send that to the server. However, there's always that one or two or five or 10 funky players that are trying to break your server. They'll recompile the executable, they'll rip out these checks and suddenly they can send all kinds of data to your server. So we also need to be doing some checks on the server. There's basically not gonna be double checks, but we do wanna make sure that on the incoming traffic, the the code that cannot be changed by a player, we make sure that the input that we get is actually going to be up to par and with, with our standards. So. What we do, we first check if the player actually put in a proper user um, username, so if it's not empty, um, if the password field is not empty, if the repeated password field is not empty, if the password field and the repeated password field are the same, and lastly, we check if um, the password is at least seven characters long. So that's one demand I'm putting here on the password. I could go into, you know, uh, needs to have a special character, needs to have at least an uppercase, or the username needs to have at least an ending that's a valid email address, like at gmail.com or at hotmail.com or at live.com. Um, but that would all just drag out this tutorial. It's not really necessary to get the multiplayer uh, functions working. Um, so I'll leave that up to you. And you know maybe I'll make one time a special tutorial on how you can implement those kind of things in Godot, but not gonna go into that right here. All we do right now is just make sure that the player has at least a, a password of seven characters or longer. So if the player survives all these checks, then basically the else uh, will hit right here. We're gonna disable the confirm in the back button, very similar to what we did with the login screen where we lock the login button, just to make sure that the player cannot click uh, create account three times in a row because you know that would probably create some weird stuff at the server. Um, then we are going to save the username and the passwords by getting the text out of those input fields and then we call the gateway, we connect to the server, we push the username, the password and the uh, boolean true. Now that last one, boolean there is one thing I do want to mention. Quickly opening the code for the on login press you can see that the connection here is exactly the same. We're calling exactly the same function, even though we want two different things to happen. One is a login, the other is a create account. Um, here you can see that this Boolean is false, and that has to do this. So this is new from the last tutorial, tutorial on creating a login screen or doing the player authentication. So add that one. Um, when we go to the gateway, you can now see that this uh, Boolean true or false is actually whether a new account is requested. So that's a new variable on the top here, and we set that 
on the gateway right there. So the player is going to connect in both cases, logging in and creating an account, is going to connect through this connect to server method. And the moment its connection is succeeded, the on connection succeeded function will fire. And here is where we previously only had request login. Now we're checking for that if new account is true, then it's a request for a new account or a create account request, and otherwise it's a request for login. So that's how we're splitting that up, but we make use of the same connect to server function to ensure that we don't have to do you know, extra complicated things with the code. So once we are requesting um, that create account, that's what we got right down here. That's really easy. It's basically just uh, taking the username and the password, sends it to the server with that one there. It's gonna request a function create account request with that username and password. That's all that's to it. That's all that we need at that point in time. And then of course we uh, clear the username and the password as we don't need them anymore. So with all that done, we now basically fire a signal to the gateway server. So let's check out the gateway server, the, uh, the server side verifications that we do there and how we push it forward to the authentication server and how it eventually gets back. So I'm on the gateway right now and here we have the remote function create account request on the gateway script. We receive that username and password and first we have to do a couple of verifications. We're going to assume that the, valid, uh, that the request is actually valid but if the username is empty, the password is empty or if the password length is not at least seven characters, we're going to set that to false. Um, we don't need to check any like repeated password checks anymore because at this point in time what the player send us is what the player send us. A player which intentionally tries to do something funky probably intentionally has some specific kind of password that he sent over and a player that didn't do anything funky and was just logging in, uh, his signals will be catched by the client side. So we don't really have to worry about that repeat password once we're on the server. With that said, if the valid request is falsified by one of these three statements, then we're immediately going to return the create account request. So we're going to immediately call this function. This function can be called by both the authentication server and um, straight here when the valid request is actually false. So we are separating and not putting these lines of code straight underneath here because these this function has multiple functions. So with that said, we of course uh, push that valid request, false or true, in this case always false because that's the if st statement. Uh, we need the player ID so we can communicate back with, to the player ID in the RPC ID call. And we send this one here. And this one means one is a fill to create. Uh, that is basically the signal is already captured by the gateway and it's not gonna happen. Two is this is an existing username. That's of course a check we're gonna be have to be doing on the authentication server. It can be the case that a username is already in use. Um, maybe you forgot you had an account. Maybe you were checking if your account created successfully or for some weird reason somebody was using somebody else's email. Uh, and three is just, you know, welcome. I'm not really doing anything with that welcome yet, um, but that's basically a successful uh, input. So let's first see how this is going to be returned to the player. So we first, we're gonna take the short loop, like we couldn't process your request, go straight back to the player. And after that, we'll have take the long loop, go all the way to the authentication server and see how that one identifies whether or not the uh, account uh, username was already existing or whether it has actually created that username, that account and, and how it does that and, uh, and how we, that looks in the data. So first back to the player. Going to the player, we have the remote function return create account request. And when you look at that, that's going to receive the results. That's a boolean, true or false, and that message, one, two, or three. So if the results were true, well, we don't have to look at that yet because that's always the case with the authentication server. Otherwise, if the message is one, that's why we need that one, two, three, because then we can show different error messages. Then we couldn't create account, please try again. Or if it's an error message too, username already exists, please use a different username or login, because it could also be the case that this player simply already has an account, maybe he didn't play for a couple of months, where that his account maybe was gone or whatever. Um, of course, uh, if the um, logging in goes wrong, we have to then um, enable the confirm and back buttons again, otherwise the player will be stuck in the user interface panel. Then we're disconnecting the signals just like we did with logging in. That's exactly the same. And when you look at the return login request, we're also disconnecting those signals. So with that said, now let's go back to the gateway and then to the authentication server to see how a positive, um, a valid request is being processed. So when the request is not false, but therefore is true, we go to the authentication singleton, we 
call the create account function, we're going to be pushing the username, the password, and the player ID. However, as you can see, we are changing the username here with a function to lower. That means that all the capital letters will be changed into lowercase letter letters. So uppercase goes to lowercase. But we do that because sometimes people type their email addresses, especially if they use their own name in the email address. They have a very big tendency to write the first letter with a capital letter or to write their name with capital letters. But that can actually be quite annoying when you try to log in again, because then suddenly your, your email address is case letter sensitive. And I don't know if you ever try to log in with case um, uppercase letters in your, in your username, if your username is your email address. If that's the case, usually you can log in with both uppercase and lowercase, it doesn't really matter. Um, so because it doesn't really matter, uh, we are just changing or converting everything to lowercase. So before we send it to the authentication server, everything is going to be lowercase, it's going to be saved in the data database, always lowercase. And whenever you try to log in, we'll make sure that it's lowercase as well. So with that said, we're going to go over to the authentication script or authenticate script, I should say. Uh, here we got the create account, which receives that data. And this does nothing else, but just send it off to the authentication server. When we switch that authentication server, this is where we're actually going to be creating that account. So let's go over this now. The create account function basically has two outcomes. One is congratulations with your new account. And two is sorry, this username already exists. So what we need is we need a result and we need an output, a message, you know, that two or that three that we talked about just a moment ago. So first, if the player data, player ID, so that comes out of the player ID data that we have on the, uh, on the server. If that data has the username that was provided, then we know that the result is going to be false and the message is going to be two. Else, that means that the username does not exist. We know that the result is going to be true and the message is going to be three. On that player data, player IDs, with that username, we're going to input a new dictionary that's going to be password and then we input the password of the player. And then, of course, we need to save those player IDs. So when we have a quick look at the player data right here, I've changed, by the way, the location from rest to user so that we can actually save this without having too much authentication um, or rights on the local OS. Um, so I've changed that to user. This for us is exactly the same, but now we also have the save player IDs, which basically takes a save file as a new file. We open that file and instead of read, we write and then we store the line to JSON player IDs and we save close. So every time we get a new account, we're saving that file just to make sure that whenever the server crashes, we still have that file on the OS system. And then of course, you know, good practice would also be to have a regular backup of that probably several times a day. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you're saving that data because otherwise, if you just keep collecting those usernames, as long as you're not saving that file, those usernames are only known on the server. They're not automatically synced to the actual file on the file system. And of course, the last thing you want is your server running for two weeks with maybe 100 or 200 new accounts being created and players playing and suddenly you uh, cut the line off and there you are. You, you miss all your player accounts. Players cannot log in anymore because it's a player, the account is not recognized. Um, so do make sure you save those files regularly and back them up regularly. There's very important data. Okay, so with all of that said, there is one thing I do wanna mention here. Now we're saving the password just as a piece of string. That is a very bad practice. Because of that, we're going to be doing a next episode on hashing and salting this password. But I do want to let you know that that's like, a, I want to put that in a separate tutorial. I was, this tutorial is going to be too long, but watch that tutorial. Don't do this. This is very bad practice. If your, if your server for some reason gets compromised and somebody gets their hands on that file, then everybody or every single account on your game is then suddenly compromised, unsafe and hackers will be able to log into every single player account with that file without any obstruction. So we're gonna be hashing and sorting these passwords in their storage so that players can actually not use that storage. They'll have to use um, uh, very hard decryption methods, uh, forced entries, which takes uh, just a, a, a gazillions of, of hours, uh, more than, than, a, than a lifetime of years. Um, so we do want to make sure that we add that extra layer of security. So don't forget to watch the next tutorial and subscribe to the channel. So once we have the uh, player data and we have saved it all, we're then going to RPC call um, the gateway. We're going to push that results. That's going to be true or false, the player ID and the message. 
So then of course we're gonna go back to the gateway that's gonna take this remote function that's gonna straight call the gateway uh, singleton with return create account request. So that is basically where we're gonna come into the same function as we had earlier. So that's why I said I didn't put these lines of code um, in the if valid request is false because we're gonna be uh, reusing this function several times and now we are using it. So this is basically going to also receive the boolean, again the player ID and the message one, two or three. And then we basically come back to the player script. But now we don't have a false uh, moment, we have a true moment. And if the results are true, then we, the account is created. Please proceed with logging in. Then we're going to uh, get that login screen and we're actually going to go on back to login press. So we're going to emulate as if the player has pressed that back button on the create account screen. So it immediately switches to the login screen and you know we would have a pop-up saying like, hey, congratulations, welcome to the game and please proceed with logging in. And then the login screen presents itself, player can log in, start playing. It's pretty much all there is to it. That, that, I added, of course, there's, there's always a couple of small caveats, right? Um, so let me go over a small minor changes that I had to make to make all of this work. So first of all, on the login screen, player client side, this login screen used to be called VBox container. Um, I didn't rename that the login screen ever. Um, but that means that on these note references, you probably, if you copied over that piece of the tutorial, you have instead of login screen right there, you have VBox container. So you do have to change those references. Also, first in the previous tutorial and in the, in the player authentication tutorials, we had no function behind the create account button behind this button right there. A couple of you actually asked in the comments and well, now it's functional. However, we never disabled that button. We only disabled the login button because well, the create account button didn't do anything anyway. So I've added an extra uh, note reference here under the login notes and when I am uh, disabling the login button, I'm also disabling the create account button. And I have to repeat that every time in the code. So when I go to the gateway script, and when I look at the uh, remote function return login request, here not only the login button is again enabled, but also the create account button is enabled. And when I go to the game server, if the token verification came uh, back unsuccessful, uh, we also have the login button disabled here uh, is false so enabled and also the create account. So you have to bring that in a couple of times, um, but that's important. So you have to change um, uh, these, these references here and you have to make sure that those uh, cr that create account button disabled is also reverted. That is also true for the gateway. Um, and now I have to find it. Uh, if the connection fails, so if we fail to connect to the gateway for whatever reason, uh, lost packets, timed out, pinged, whatever, uh, here we previously only had that the login button disabled was false, so we enabled the login button again. Uh, and because we use the same connection for both logging in and creating the account, we don't know which buttons we have disabled and which are still enabled. So in this case, we are just going to be enabling all of these buttons again. I mean, the connection with the gateway failed, so the player will have to make another attempt. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much what we have to do for all of this. So with all that out of the way, now you know all the small changes you need to make. Final thing we have to do is a small demonstration, I think. So I have all my servers running. Uh, I'm here in the client, uh, ready to log in. Uh, but we're going to create a new account instead. So uh, you know what, let's let's just first try... Um, I don't need to add an actual email address, we don't make that test. Let's say we, didn't, we forgot to put a password in there. Press confirm and immediately says, please provide a valid password. So, okay, uh, provide a valid password and I please repeat your password. And let's repeat something different uh, and it all says uh, the passwords don't match. So that all seems to work pretty well. Now let's do actually something more serious. So let's go with uh, uh, test at uh, test.nl because you know what, I'm in the Netherlands, so why not? Uh, and let's go for password, just let's not make it very complicated else I can't remember it. And, you know, it's always a problem with me. Um, so let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. So we go for uh, confirm. And here we go, uh, successfully connected to the gateway, requesting new account, result received, account created. Please proceed with logging in. And we switch to the logging in screen. Um, now, of course, the question is, uh, did it actually work? So I got the file actually here. Um, so this should have now been saved. So first, we of course had the test in the test one, two, three, four, or test one, two, three. So that was this user. And now we have a comma, we have a new user. Let's test test.nl. 
um, password 123567. So that seems to work perfectly. And if you think that I've put that data here, because you always have people that doubt, you know, that, that, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, let's just put in a um, 123 here. Uh, that means it's a new user and users can have the same password. Um, of course, the confirm button is not working, so that's a little bit of a shame. So let's, let's quickly rerun this. Small effort, small effort. Stay with me. Create account. Go test one two three at um, uh, test of nil. We go one two three four five six seven eight. You know what? Let's make the password different as well. Do I have to make that the same? You confirm. Account created. Now when I look at this file. When I open it, and it was still open, it will recognize like, hey, it has been modified by another program in the meantime. Do you want to check that? Yes. And now we can see we also have test123 with password 1235678. So that all seems to work perfectly. Now, of course, the question is, can we log in with that? And of course, we can. So we're going to do test. Um, let's do that last one. 123 at test.nl. And for the password, 1234567, and we log in. And there we go, successful token verification, and we can kill wear bears again. Everybody happy. So that's it. That was it for today, guys. Hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on that next episode where we'll be hashing and sorting the passwords of our users. Now, I want to give a big thank you and a big shout out to everybody that has been supporting me through the YouTube memberships right here. It's been absolutely heartwarming to see all that support come in and it definitely drives me to make more of these high quality tutorials. If you don't know what the memberships are, don't know what I'm talking about there's this little join button down below where normally the subscribe button is and we'll show you a little bit of a pop-up at the various levels you can support me at works pretty much exactly the same on uh, like patreon but then right here on YouTube um, yeah helps me out and you get some benefits too so go check it out I hope to see you on the next tutorial and until then keep on gaming keep on coding see you later guys